first from today until kingdom come and lose an election. You could be a purist from today until kingdom come and have another terrorist attack. At some point, there's a delicate balancing point, and I don't know what that point is, but that's what we're arguing about in America right now. And I think the same applies to the wall around the Vatican, the hypocrisy of the church, the Pope saying that uh, Trump is not a Christian. Uh, this is a very, very important discussion as well. This Pope is clearly a naked Leninist, Marxist, whatever you want to call him. I've never seen anything like it. We know that he's a revolutionary. That's why they selected him and brought him to the Vatican. They could not find another cardinal at this level of left-wing fanaticism in the entire world. They searched the world up and down. He's opposed, by the way, by conservative cardinals. You don't know that. There's a huge revolution brewing inside the uh, Catholic Church that you never hear about. It never leaks out. There's a huge, huge argument and fight going on inside the Catholic Church because this man is as fanatical to the Catholic Church as Obama is to the U.S. Constitution and the American people. Be back in a minute on the Savage Nation to take your calls. We have one open line, 855-407-282. This and all the breaking news right here on the Savage Nation. All right, this is a huge topic, and I think that there's more interest in this topic than in any other, which is the privacy versus security over the Apple phone decrypt order. That's what we're hearing. That's what people are excited about. Because most of you who listen to this show distrust this government, and rightly so. Let's be clear about it. You don't trust any division of this government. And so for that reason alone, you're saying, you know what? I'd rather the government not have a master key into every phone in the country and let them worry about the next terrorist attack. That's what we pay them trillions of dollars a year for. Let all the geniuses in, the, in security find them without the phone. That's what you're saying. And that's what you're calling about. And so what you think about it is very important to me. Then the Pope and his hypocrisy is another topic that we're talking about. Let's go to W. I haven't gone to WABC at all today. WABC in New York on a, on a blank. Call screener went out for a, a coffee break. It was 10 to the hour. He needed a, a hydration break. WABC Joe, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Joe? Michael, I just want you to know that Catholics like myself, uh, this Pope doesn't speak for us. I'm a member of the Knights of Columbus. My wife's a member of the Legion Mary, and he is not a voice of the Catholic people. Well, how did this happen to the Catholic Church? How did they find a radical leftist like this, the first non-European pope in 1,200 years? That un unto itself was odd. And so there are people pulling the strings all over the world to break down borders, to bring Muslims and flood them into Europe, to bring Mexicans and Central Americans, I'm sorry to say it, many of them are wonderful, beautiful people, but the nation has to have a set of laws about immigration. You can't just let people trample over a border. And you know the Catholic Church is doing this because their uh, attendance is low. Isn't that true? That's a fact, and I agree with you 100%. It's disgusting how this guy has to feel like he has to interject himself into American politics. It's sickening. We talk about it on our inner circles. Uh, priests are afraid to come out about this, but trust me, I was more of a Cruz fan until this point. Because the only man to come out and speak against this hypocrisy is Donald Trump. And it really it really resonates with me a lot, i got to be honest with you. All right, you made your point, and I thank you for calling. I wish I could be made an honorary member of the Knights of Columbus. But I'm, uh, I'm not the Knights of Columbus. I'm an immigrant son, and I wasn't related to Columbus in any way. So far as I know, who knows? Maybe my ancestor was Columbus. So many people hold up the Constitution, you'd think that their grandfather wrote it. So maybe Columbus was my ancestor. Maybe I could hold up a document every day and talk about Christopher Columbus. And like no one ever heard of Christopher Columbus. What else is in the news? Any news that I'm missing somewhere? There must be news that I hear. AP breaking news from TBO.com. Uh, Arab Springs Chile aftermath. Oh, they caught up with that three years later? Editorial, Arab Springs Chile aftermath. You hear? Three years after the fact, they're admitting the Arab Spring was a disaster. Boy, geniuses. They give themselves awards for this one. Hillary Clinton owns the Arab Spring. How come they don't ask her about it? How come any of the geniuses like Anderson Cooper, who's probably a nice guy, I, know, I look at Anderson Cooper, he looks like a nice guy. Why doesn't he have the, the integrity? Let's forget the other words, the, uh, 
slummy words. Why does he not have the integrity to once question Hillary Clinton about the Arab Spring which she owns? <clears throat> Why doesn't somebody have the nerve to stand up to the Pope who says that it's not Christian to build border walls? Who does this old man think he is? Why, he's the Pope. It's as high as you can go in the world. And Tim Cook, is he right or wrong? Many of you say he's right and I'm wrong. And frankly, from the point of view of giving the government a master key, they're right. No, the government should not have a master key. But right now, I need to know an answer to something before I come down on this one way or the other. And I need to know a little bit more about, about it. Does Tim Cook currently own a master key to break into any encryption? If he doesn't and they want him to create one, that's another story. That's a whole different discussion. Because if, if Apple currently owns such a master key, then they can break into anyone's phone and uh, look at, the, at your secretive data. So until I know whether they currently own a master key, I don't know the answer. Uh, Tim on WJR, welcome to the Savage Nation. Topic, please. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a new caller. I'd like to it's Tom, by the way. Uh, I'd like to say that I agree that Tim Cook should be in jail for obstruction of justice. He, uh, the company is a company phone. The company gave permission to go into that phone, so that's, that should be said and done right there. I disagree with you about saying to bust up the big tech companies because that's anti-capitalistic. It'd be like somebody coming to you. Well, to wait a minute. Hold on now. Wait a minute now. There are rules in capitalism. It's not, it's not a, an open, wild west capitalism. Don't you think capitalism should have some limits? Absolutely. Some regulations, but not overregulated. All right, we agree on that. We all agree that there's too much government interference down to the local level. If I want to put a fence up in my suburban house, I have to go to a bunch of communists in Marin County, and every one of them has to tell me what I can and cannot do. That's too big a government for me. Fine. But when there's no competition, there's a word for that. It's called monopoly. Who is the competitor to Apple right now? Uh, probably Samsung, I would think, would be the biggest. Okay. Who is the competitor to Microsoft and their operating systems? I can't think of any for that one. All right, so M Microsoft is absolutely conducting a monopolistic practice, in my opinion. And I believe that any new president should look into a, into a monopoly, period. I think that some companies have gotten so big that they have snuffed out any competition whatsoever. If you dominate 99% of a market, that's called a monopoly. I mean, what, what should the limit be? 50%, 60%, 70%? Facebook, who's the competitor to old uh, uh, Facelberg? Is there another Facebook out there? No. No, so Facebook needs to be broken up to give small startup companies a chance to grow and own 5 6 7% of the market. That would be capitalism. Right now, this is not capitalism, uh, Tom. This is, this is something else. And I thank you for being a new listener to the Savage Nation. New listeners are welcome. New listeners are welcome. Well, my friends, uh, this is almost the end of hour number two. The world is upside down. Go to michaelsavage.com to see how upside down it is. Your president, not mine, because I don't consider him my president, any more than most Catholics are going to think don't consider this pope their pope. Obama is not my president. He's meeting with the thugs who almost burned Ferguson and Maryland to the ground as I speak, and he will not go to Scalia's funeral. Why? How do you feel about that? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity, Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Now on the sidewalk, uh -huh, uh -huh. ooh, Sunday morning, uh -huh. Lies about it. Sunny music, don't we? In the world that we're living in, this dark world. Obama has sucked the sunlight out of America. The man is so m malicious towards this nation. 
He won't go to Alito's funeral, but he'll invite thugs who try to burn down Ferguson, Missouri, and Baltimore, Maryland to the White House with Al Sharpton, a street criminal, and to top it off, the number one lawmaker in the land, number one lawyer, Loretta Lynch, is there with bums who try to burn his city down? It's a world upside down, but I'm not shocked. The reason I'm not shocked is because when Obama was foisted upon us, I, on this radio show, soon thereafter, the minute I studied his background, which wasn't too difficult to do, anyone in the media could have done it if they really cared to do so, uh, I was reminded of the, uh, of the film Burn with Marlon Brando from a long time ago, and I even said it on this show. You'll have to look up the movie Burn, because I knew what was coming. And now we have people who torched the city invited into the White House. Can you believe this? And now he's inviting people in who should have arrested the, these, uh, these, these arsonists, meeting with them and having lunch with them in the White He sucked the sunlight out of this nation. And you think that there was no foul play with regard to the death of Scalia. He's just an old man who went away to a ranch in the middle of nowhere. None of that makes sense. None of it makes sense. None of it makes sense to any detective in this country. But it makes sense to all of the uh, geniuses in the media. It's already water under the bridge. No, no need, nothing to see here. No, nothing to see here. No, no pillow. Forget the pillow. Everything had an answer for. Well, there's some things to which there's no answer for with regard to Scalia's strange uh, demise. Number one, if he was so sick, why did he agree to go on a hunting trip so far away from home? Two, if he had a shoulder injury, why did he agree to go on a hunting trip with a shoulder injury? I know I've had a shoulder injury. I had to give up doing up. Uh, chin, what do you call it? Curls. I used to love doing curls. I did them all my life. My arms are nice and solid. I, I haven't done curls for f six months because I, I found out that if I stopped doing them, the pain went away. The day I would do them, the lightest weight, I would injure my, my trapezius muscle again. I would be re-injured. I can't go hunting with a shotgun and blow my shoulder off. It's that simple. So that doesn't make sense. You don't go hunting with a shoulder injury. You don't go that far away from home to a remote area without a physician traveling with you, without any medical uh, uh, teams near you, and without any security. Something doesn't make sense from top to bottom. And now suddenly this guy, this uh, forensic pathologist, the, the, the great Bader, whatever his name is, he waited to see which way the wind was blowing for five days to come out with an opinion saying he could have been poisoned. You hear? The, the politician, he wanted to see which way the wind blew before he gave an opinion. I didn't, I didn't have to wait till the wind blew to find out which way the, the, my opinion should be. I analyzed it, and it stinks to high heaven. The whole thing stinks. But what good does it do when there's no opposition party and no press in America? And the wall? Uh, Mr. Pope, tear down that wall. That's what I say. Mr. Pope, tear down that wall. I mean, your ancestors wisely built a wall to protect you and your, uh, your indiv the individuals who live there. But you tell us not to have a wall? Then you suggest Donald Trump is not a Christian? This is getting crazier by the day. Well, Trump, I hope he holds up, and I hope him and Cruz survive the final cut, because they're two fine men. And I would only advise that they stop taking the bait from Megyn Kelly and the other vermin in the media who are pitting them against each other for ratings without giving one whit about the nation itself, putting their, their ratings above everything else. It's sickening. Then we have the Apple issue, privacy versus security at the heart of the Apple phone decrypt order. And it's a very important argument. At the heart of the case is the young Muslim couple, young Muslim couple, who are sympathizing and communicating with ISIS, practicing Muslims going in and out of the mosque, who then went on a slaughter fest, a bloodbath. They executed 14 innocent people and wounded 22 others at a holiday party. Then they flee, and the police didn't know where they went. Their phone was found, and it's months later now. It's a long time later. And the federal judge in L.A. orders Apple to provide, quote, reasonable technical assistance to investigators seeking to read the data on an iPhone 5C that had been used by Rizwan Freak, along with his wife, Tashfeen Malik Freak, who conducted the, uh, the, the massacre. And Apple's saying, no, we're not going to do it. So they've taken a risky bet on protecting a terrorist iPhone. That's absolutely certainly the case. Now, the case is a complicated one, I agree. 
if the government is insisting that Apple create a technical 